Alrighty, good day and welcome. My name is Mr. Bent and today we are going to be going through another photo P tutorial doing a face swap. Today we've got these two images in front of me with Tom Holland and Timothy Charlemagne and we are going to be doing a face swap between the two and taking Tom's face and putting it onto Timothy's body. Firstly, these two images will be down below if you do want access to follow along with this tutorial to have access to these images. But with that being said, let's get into it. So. To begin this, we are going to have our two images. As you can see, I've already dropped mine in there. I'm going to select my move tool for the time being, and I'm going to make two copies of, or a copy of each of these layers, just so that way I have an original in case something messes up, I can always jump back to these. So I'm going to drop these all down here, uh, my copies, and I'm going to lock them. To do that duplication, you can press Control J, so you just need to select it in the layer and Control J, or you can right click and duplicate layer whichever way that you want, both of them will do the exact same thing. Now, with my layers all made and my two locked out on the bottom and now my ones active on top, I'm going to go grab our lasso tool. Our lasso tool will be in the rectangle select menu. You are going to right click that and then select the lasso. And then we're just going to draw around Tom Holland's face. We're gonna try and grab everything we can, make sure that we grab his eyebrows and make sure that we can grab something around the bottom of his jaw and just do our best to grab as much as possible. Now, if you don't end up grabbing everything, so as you can see there, I didn't connect my points. If you don't connect your points with the lasso, it will not let it select. So that's something very important is that you make sure that your points are connected. So to go all the way through, I make sure that I've gone back to that end when I deselect. Awesome. Now I have this selected and you might look at it and go, that looks like a really crappy tracing job. And it is, but that doesn't matter for what we're doing. We'll be adjusting stuff and we'll be making this so it is good. We just need the base of his entire face. Now we're going to copy this layer and we are going to paste it. So we can do control C and control V with this selected, or we can go to edit, copy and edit paste. It will do the same thing. And now I've got this layer of just Tom Holland's face. I'm going to remove this layer of Tom Holland. I'm going to drag it all the way to the bottom. You can delete it if you want. We won't need it going forward, um, but it's up to you, whatever you would like. I'm going to leave mine there just for the time being. I'm now going to select my move tool or first my zoom tool, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer to the faces. This will help me to determine stuff when I'm doing my blending as we go through stuff in the future. Now I'm going to select my layer one and bring over Tom Holland's face and I'm going to drop its opacity. To do that, you just select this opacity menu in the layers section, and you're, I'm just going to drop that. So that way I can try and line up these faces a little bit better. I'm going to drop the size of this and try my best to line up these two faces, rotate them if need be. So that way I can try and line up the eyes and line up the mouth as much as I possibly can. And just to kind of help with this transition. Bam, bam. Rotate this back. Excellent. Now those eyes might look a little blurry. They might look a little messy and it might not look perfect, but this is pretty good in terms of lining stuff up with faces. A lot of faces don't end up lining up very well. And when you're doing something like this, it's important that you get faces that are looking at the camera the same way. So as I'm looking at my camera straight on right now, you need two images of people that were doing the same thing. You couldn't have somebody who was looking straight at the camera and another person looking a little bit down because their face angle won't really match up that well. When you go to expand the face, the proportions will be off and it'll be really easy to tell when you do that and it'll just look weird. So it's important that you're trying to find images that are as close to the same perspective as possible to help you with this matching process. Now I'm gonna bring my opacity all the way back up to 100%, that way it's 100% there and his skin tones don't match, but that's okay right now. We're going to adjust that in just a moment. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to create a raster mask layer. To do that with my layer one selected, I'm gonna go down here to the bottom of my layers menu and I'm gonna select add a raster mask. That is the rectangle with a circle in the middle, kind of looks like a camera and you'll see as soon as you click it, it now adds a white box to the right side of Tom Holland's face. That is excellent. This is gonna allow us to paint over some sections to be able to help this blend a little bit better. I'm now going to select my brush tool and I'm going to go and select my brush to be the soft round. Yours will probably be defaulted as the hard round and I have increased my size to make my brush a little bit larger. 
With that selected, it's important that you make sure that your paint color is black. So to do that, you can select down here on the left side of the screen. You can click on that black box and just make sure it is in one of the bottom sections. So that way the paintbrush color is black. Now your opacity will probably start at 100. And as you're going through this, um, if you have it too high as this is, as I go to try and blend, I'm really just erasing stuff, which might make it look good, might not make it look good. Um, you can probably keep his eyebrows and then continue on, but that's not what I'm going to be doing for mine as I'm going through this. I'm going to bring all that back. I'm going to drop my opacity. Now it's important that you have that white box selected because if you have the regular Tom Holland's face, when you paint, you will just paint black over top of that. So it's important that you have that proper layer selected when you're going through this. Again, I'm going to drop that opacity somewhere around 20 to 30% just to help me with the blending because I'm going to do either some fast clicking and just kind of click multiple times to make this blend a little bit better. So you can see, I'm just going to do a whole bunch of clicks around the top of the head and that kind of helping to blend and remove the harshness of that line. I can do the same thing all the way across, or I can sit there and hold it and kind of pass over it a couple times. That'll do the same way. I prefer doing the multiple clicks. Uh, I find that a little bit more precise for me because I can determine when I want that to stop. Now I'm just going to go all the way around the face to make that blend happen. It won't look perfect when you're done and that's totally okay. We're going to still have a couple steps. This isn't the last thing we do with this blend option. We still have one more, op one more thing to do and that's gonna kind of seal the deal on how this will look. So you might be happy with how that looks, but there is one more step we can do to take this to the next level to kind of match these skin tones a little bit better. And once you're happy with it, you've done your blending, you've done your opacity, you might need to mess with that. You might need to mess with the sizes. If your person's got a beard and the other person doesn't have a beard, if you're trying to graft that beard onto the other person or remove it, you might have to spend some more time zooming into different segments to remove that hair or to alter that. So just keep that in mind as you're going through and you're trying to graft the face onto the other face. If they've got facial hair, that's something to be aware of. Now with this selected, I'm going to go and I'm going to hold shift and then I'm going to select my other layer. So hold shift and select. That means both of these layers are now highlighted, which is excellent. That's what we want. These are the only two layers we are going to be blending with each other. Now this is our final step. We are going to go to image. No, oh, sorry. We are going to go to edit and we are going to go to auto blend. This might take a moment. It'll take sometimes five seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute if you're on a Chromebook can take up to because it's trying to blend all of those options and it is kind of blurring them into each other and you'll see once I click this even my computer is kind of frozen right now it's just doing its stuff it will just take a moment and you'll see that it has now matched those skin tones a little bit better and that in a nutshell is how we do a face swap in Photopea again it's important that you choose some people whose skin tones are fairly close to each other and that their faces are on the same perspective, just to make this a little bit easier for your transition. But this is ultimately how you can do a face swap in Photopea. Now, with that being said, that is everything that we are going to walk through for today for this tutorial. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you learned something. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care and be safe.